Hello, and welcome to Lexicology, the study of words. In the course so far, we've traced the origins of English from the Indo-Europeans to our modern flavors of English. We've thought about words more deeply than the typical English speaker. We've torn them apart and put them back together in unique ways. We've separated the ideas of written and spoken language, and we've seen how the alphabet evolved into what we use today. You now see the relationship between language sounds and spelling. In the last unit, we saw that English is not a homogeneous construct. In this unit, we'll consider translation. Translation, interpreting one language in terms of another, is a process that forces us to think very deeply about semantics and the subtle meanings embedded in words. Since we're focusing on English in this course, we won't worry too much about translation from and into other languages. Instead, we'll think about translation within English, using what we already know about meaning and thinking about metaphor as a type of translation. Let's start with an example that should be familiar to you by now, The Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. We discussed earlier the appeal that this poem holds for linguists. People can invent words and easily ascribe meaning to these inventions. Our language dexterity, how we use the clues in the context to make sense of words we don't know, is a skill that we develop as we master a language. Another example that linguists have admired over the years and passed on to their students is this one. When Noam Chomsky constructed this example of a sentence that had never before been spoken, he gave us a great example of how we can know all of the words in a sentence and know that they are in the right order, but not be able to make any sense out of it. After all, something can't be green and colorless at the same time. Ideas can't sleep or have a color, and if they could sleep, what would it mean to sleep furiously? This is an example of semantic anomaly. As you know, the word semantics tells us it has to do with meaning, and anomaly is a word that you should be able to figure out given your knowledge of morphemic decomposition and the context in which you've encountered it. But in spite of its apparent opacity, people have taken a stab at making sense of that sentence. In a 1985 competition to ascribe meaning to the sentence, C.M. Street came up with this beautiful bit of prose. It's amazing how our imaginations can be manipulated into finding meaning. It can only be the thought of verdure to come, which prompts us in the autumn to buy these dormant white lumps of vegetable matter covered by a brown, papery skin, and lovingly to plant them and care for them. It is a marvel to me that under this cover they are laboring unseen at such a rate within to give us the sudden awesome beauty of spring flowering bulbs. While winter rains, the earth reposes, but these colorless green ideas sleep furiously. This is an important part of the poet's craft. A good poet engages us using words that we actually translate into meaningful images or feelings. How well we decipher a poem will depend on our facility with words and, of course, the skill of the poet. We're often stumped by a poet's writing. I think this poem by Dylan Thomas would be difficult to translate into prose, and if I were to translate it into another language, I would have to make some crucial decisions as I went forward. What decisions would I need to make? Well, many. First, would this translation follow the form of the original? Would it have three stanzas with three lines comprising one clause each? Would the lines follow the same general rhyme and alliteration scheme? Would I translate directly idioms such as take to task or gift of the gab? These questions don't even start to address the question of meaning or metaphor, as I might interpret it. This would be a difficult poem to translate into another language, since it may be difficult for us to interpret it in English. And this is one of Thomas's less opaque productions. Poets use anomaly to engage the listener in the interpretation process. The poet calls upon an active listener to use her knowledge of the world to interpret the words. When the listener interprets anomaly in terms of a meaningful concept, we may end up with a metaphor. 
A metaphor is a term or phrase used to represent something else. Metaphor can be useful to understand one concept in terms of another. For example, we use metaphors such as time is money or all the world's a stage. As they pointed out in their book, Metaphors We Live By, metaphors are an important part of our cultural values. Metaphors can help guide our thinking about the world, and sometimes, by changing the metaphors we use subconsciously, we may be able to gain insights into our behavior. So for the conduit metaphor, we might say, his words carry little meaning, or it's difficult to put it into words, or it's hard to get the idea across to him. These examples point out the importance of context in meaning and how words in and of themselves don't always contain meaning independent of the speaker or the context of a sentence. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to think about another metaphor that we could use for how we transmit ideas. So remember, in your journey through the university, that the wheel in the sky keeps on turning and don't stop believing.